Hey everyone, Danny Rubino here at Windows Central, and this is your Microsoft and Windows Roundup. First up, the Surface Book 2 got a refresh, kind of. If you're interested in the Core i5 model, well, that version was always strange. Microsoft shipped it with a Core i5 7300U. That's a dual core processor, also seventh generation. That was always weird because the i7 model shipped with the eighth generation. Well, Microsoft has now rectified it. You can now pick up a Surface Book 2 with a Core i5 8350U. So you're gonna get a slight processor bump, but you also go from dual to quad core, and that delivers a lot of extra performance. Now don't forget, this model still doesn't have a discrete GPU like the NVIDIA. NVIDIA does for the Core i7 model, but you can still get the Intel UHD graphics with it, and overall this should be a significant performance bump. Now pricing starts at $1499, which is the same price for the old Core i5 version, which is actually still available, but it's $200 cheaper, so you can pick that up if you want to save some money. But I would go for that Core i5 quad model, I think that's going to be a really interesting skew for a lot of people, but hopefully we'll see a Surface Book 3 maybe later this fall. Next up is the Razer Turret for Xbox One. So we actually did a quick unboxing hands-on with this recently. We'll have a full review soon. But if you don't know, you can now use a keyboard and mouse with your Xbox One, and you can actually bring any kind of keyboard and mouse with it, but this one is actually designed by Razer for the couch. With it, it's gonna have a really four and a half pound heavy keyboard that sits nicely in your lap, and a nice little mouse. Overall, it should be a really good experience, but it's expensive at $250. As a lot of people pointed out, it doesn't have a headphone jack. As to why, I'm gonna ask Razer later today and find out, and hopefully we'll have an answer for you in our full review. Now, if $250 is too expensive, don't worry, there are a couple alternatives out there, and we'll be covering those at Windows Central. I hate to use the fake news tag, but Cortana is leaving Skype. Not really, actually. Cortana Bot is leaving Skype, and that may actually sound bad, as a lot of people are going to say, well, this is a proof that Microsoft is pulling Cortana everywhere. It's not really the case, though. Turns out, bots are going away from Skype. If you don't remember a few years ago, Microsoft tried to use the bot model in Skype by putting a lot of applications in there. Cortana was one of them. This was actually supposed to mirror a lot of the Asian markets, where something like WeChat does use a lot of bots. And in fact, in Asia, bots are a big deal. Western markets, not so much. And it turns out, they didn't catch on. So as a result, Microsoft is playing the Cortana bot as well as all the other bots. In fact, your latest version of Skype for PC and Android and iOS probably does not have any bot support. There are still some on there hanging on, but you can't search or add any more. And that's the way it is. Now Cortana is actually still in Skype, specifically Conversation View, where it'll make suggestions based on the context of your conversation and help save you a couple of keystrokes. That does not seem to be going anywhere. It actually mirrors what Google is doing in Gmail as well for its email system. All right, next up is market share, specifically the Windows 10 operating system. The October update from 2018 apparently has hit around 26% of the Windows 10 market, which is pretty low when you think about it. Now, the numbers come from Ad Duplex, which uses a survey of about 5,000 applications in its advertising SDK to get those numbers. So this is scientific-ish, but it's not the end-all be-all. Still, that's a pretty low number. And in fact, the October update didn't roll out for a lot of people until December. I still had devices that didn't get it until January and later. So the October update did have a few problems problems when it did roll out, including the ability to delete some files for some users. Let's just say this was not the most smooth update, and that 26% number reflects that. Fingers crossed, though, that the April 2019 update does much better, and it's going to be much more stable. We'll see, though, in a couple weeks and see how well it does. And finally, in the things that Microsoft is removing this week, it is going to be books from the Microsoft Store. So books were always kind of weird, but it was part and parcel with the Edge browser, which we all know is kind of going away, or rather is being replaced with the Chromium version. Unfortunately, with book support going away with Edge, doesn't look like Microsoft wants to put it into the Chromium edition. And that may be, in fact, driven by the fact that not a lot of people are using books on the store. In fact, it does raise the question of who's actually using this. I've tried one or two books, but I just don't use my PC that way. I'm like most people, I go with an Amazon Kindle, or a lot of people like to use Audible instead. So in a way, this makes sense, but still not a good sign. Microsoft probably invested a lot of money to get that book system rolling. And it did seem like a good play for schools where education would matter here for users books, but unfortunately this system is going away. Now my personal thoughts on this is I kind of don't care. Like I said, I never use books, but it is another bad sign of Microsoft again launching something and pulling back again. They seem to not be able to get this right. But then again, Apple did just cancel air power, so they're not necessarily alone here at all. All right, so there's your latest news roundup. Now, you leave me a comment below and tell me what you think about Microsoft's decision to remove books. Do you care or do you mind a lot? Otherwise, don't forget to join us every Friday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on YouTube for our live podcast. You can join in and ask us questions. Otherwise, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.